I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us open our hearts and listen to the word of God. The gospel comes from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of the Lord. Looking at this gospel lesson, we see Jesus' disciples fearing for their lives. The boat is in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, a very large body of water. You can't be in the middle of it and just pull over quickly to the shoreline. It's that big. The boat is filling up with water. Who wouldn't be afraid in this situation? I know I would. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? The disciples' response isn't surprising to me. What is surprising, however, is their response after Jesus demands the storm to stop, and it stops. They were greatly afraid. Who is this that even the wind and sea obey him? My question is, given this response, what did they expect Jesus to do? They didn't, they didn't come to him. Do you not care that we are perishing if they didn't expect him to do something or be able to remedy the situation, would they? Up to this point in the Gospel of Mark, the disciples have already seen Jesus do many miracles. In fact, the first miracle Jesus performed, recorded in Mark, was Jesus driving out an unclean spirit. When Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit, he commands, Be quiet! Come out of him! And the unclean spirit leaves. Now I admit that halting the storm may be on a higher magnitude than casting out a demon, but it's not like the disciples have never seen Jesus perform a miracle. So I go back to the same question. What were they expecting Jesus to do? 
As we ponder the situation in the gospel, it can be helpful for us to ask ourselves the same question. When we call on God for help, when we are afraid, what kind of response do we expect? How will we respond? There's plenty of things going on in our world today that can cause us fear. This can include issues surrounding COVID, fear of getting the virus, fear of having long-term effects from having the virus, fear of others we love or ourselves dying from the virus. We have the war going on in Ukraine. How will it affect my life? Is my loved one or friends that live there, are they going to be okay? Is there a chance my own country will be invaded or attacked? I'm sure you and all of us can name at least a few stressors that cause us to fear in our lives. And I want to take just a moment to be silent and allow time for each one of us to consider within ourselves what things in life cause us to be fearful. We'll do that now. Regardless of what causes us to fear, it can cause us to think unclearly, unable to thoroughly assess a situation. It can stop us in our tracks so that we are unable to move or do anything or do something that makes the matter worse. Long term, it can cause disease like heart attacks, high blood pressure, strokes, diabetes. Regardless of what we fear, God's desire and command is for us to not fear. And how do we keep fear from overtaking us? Well, the answer is in our gospel, in our gospel lesson today. When Jesus sees the disciples fearful, he says to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? So, the answer to overcoming our fear is as simple as having faith. Faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ. At times it may not seem simple, but really it is. All we need to do is open our Bibles, see God's word that reminds us what Jesus has done, is doing, and will do, and continue to do forever. And that is loving us, caring for us, remaining faithful to us, our all-powerful God and Redeemer. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus says, My friends, don't fear those who kill the body, and after that can do nothing more to you. Fear him who has authority to throw, to throw people into hell after death. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out all fear. Don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There are many things that can, that can confront us in our lives that cause us to fear, just like the disciples were afraid that day on the Sea of Galilee. In those times, and in all times, what we can and should expect from God is perfect and complete peace. Thank you, Greg and Sharon, for sharing the Word of God this evening. We continue by reciting together the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. 
The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue to pray for Ukraine. O God of peace, we pray for Ukraine and Russia. Enlighten their leaders that they may use diplomatic means to resolve their issues. Give to the leaders of the world the courage and the wisdom to stand up for justice and to be generous in welcoming refugees who are forced to leave their families and homes. Teach us also to love our neighbors far and near. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for peace. O God, you made yourself known to us in the person of Jesus, and now you are made flesh in all people. Let us be a community of the Incarnation, a people who sorrow suffer, hope, and rejoice with all human beings. Let us be Christ to one another. Let us be peace. Amen. Let us also remember before God those who are sick, that they might put their trust in God. O God, the source of all health, we lift up to you all who are suffering from pain and sickness, especially Kathy and Catherine. Help them to trust in you so that with calm expectancy, they may make room for your power to comfort and bring them wholeness. We also pray for all who are taking care of the sick. Sustain them with your grace that with love and patient understanding, they may be strengthened through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for hope. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide, that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May God the Father lead us from death to life from falsehood to truth. May God the Son lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. May God the Holy Spirit lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. And may peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Amen. Have a good evening and thank you for joining us.